Everything that you need to know about the 2023 college wrestling season can be broken down into five simple questions. And let me give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. If you are a fan of wrestling stats, <laughs> you're going to love this video. First of all, when does the season even start? It actually kicks off this weekend, November 4th, 5th, and 6th with some big events. The biggest dual meet of the weekend is probably Oregon State versus Lehigh. And if it's not that one, then it's probably the Battle in River City, which Wisconsin is hosting down in Florida. Teams competing will be Wisconsin, Iowa State, Buffalo, and Campbell, all in the first weekend of the season. Other than that, there are a few open tournaments kicking off this weekend, but the really big date that you want to have on your calendar, one is the All-Star Classic in November 22nd with some big names competing, but second of all is January 27th, the Penn State versus Iowa Dual Meet. By the way, I should probably let you know that the NCAA championships are March 16th through 18th. And speaking of that, what actually happened last year at the national championships? Well, Penn State upended and defeated Michigan and Iowa to claim the NCAA title. Penn State has won nine of the past 11 NCAA championships. That's, of course, excluding the 2020 season, which was canceled. And through that time, the only two teams to upset Penn State were Ohio State and Iowa. And while we're talking about it, the last non-Big Ten school to win NCAAs was Oklahoma State all the way back in 2006. Ride em, cowboy. So Penn State is the team to beat this year. And I'll get to some of those other teams in a second. But first, I want to talk about the third question, which is, what did you miss in the offseason? Some of your Iowa Hawkeye wrestling friends may know that there's a new transfer in the biggest transfer in the offseason, Real Woods, who went from Stanford to Iowa in the offseason. He is wrestling at 141 pounds, which is a big replacement for Jaden Ironman, who's now out of the fold. The other big transfer that you you should probably have your eyes out for is Michael Beard of Lehigh, previously of Penn State, wrestling at 197 pounds. He couldn't beat out Max Dean in the lineup, so you better believe he's going to have some revenge coming his way this year. And with that said, you should probably also know that most of the big time seniors are gone. There was a mass exodus where all those guys are done with their eligibility who've been in college for like 10 years at this point the guys like Jaden Ironman Michael Kemmer Hayden Hydley they're all gone and there's a big open field for somebody new to take over all of that so those were the wrestlers, but what about some of the coaching changes? Well, there's Nate Carr Jr., now coaching at Davidson. Jordan Lean, head coach at Brown. Derek Moore, the head coach at Cal Baptist. And Kenny Monday, the new head coach at Morgan State University, which that's big news in and of itself, considering it is the first program in a couple years to revive a program and offer a new head coach in Kenny Monday. They'll be joining the D1 Fray in the 2023-2024 season. And that brings us to the fourth thing that really explains this season, which is who are the top teams? There's Penn State and Iowa as the top two. Other than that, the next team is Ohio State, who's a top five team this year after just finishing 13th at the national championships last season. There's already been some shakeups within the Ohio State lineup with Bryce Hepner beating Carson Harchula at 165 pounds. So needless to say, the Ohio State Buckeyes have some extreme depth and add those guys on on top of Sammy Sasso, Ethan Smith, and Kayla Romero, and you have a national title contending team. And speaking of depth, the Mizzou Tigers don't only have depth to compete at the Big 12 championships, but also on the national stage. Nearly every single one of their guys have made the blood round in the past or advanced, but they just had a couple of All-Americans last year, and if more guys can enter onto the podium, they're a serious contending team. They'll also be contending for their 12th straight conference title. This includes MAC and Big 12 titles. And speaking of conference winning streaks, Arizona State is another contending team. They'll be looking to claim seven individual Pac-12 titles on top of a team championship. Last year, they had six individual titles, but this year, many of those guys are back. DeCorey Teamer, Cordell Norfleet, Kyle Parco, adding in some new guys. I'm also mentioning Colton Schultz, who's a national finalist from last year. That's a team to watch out for. But that's enough about the team, so let's move on to the fifth thing that helps to explain this season, 
which is the individuals. But before I get to that, I gotta let you know that I have a bonus for you at the end of this video if you're a huge fan of all of these wrestling stats so far. So two of the biggest individuals to watch are, of course, Spencer Lee of Iowa competing at 125 pounds and Yanni Diakmahalis of Cornell competing at 149 pounds. These two guys are contending for their fourth NCAA titles, which would be a historic year. We've never seen two four-timers crowned in the same year. On top of that, Iowa Hawkeyes fans can rejoice because Spencer Lee would be their first ever four-timer. But on the opposite side, Penn State fans can still be excited because they can have multiple three-time national champions, Roman Bravo Young, Carter Sirachi, and Aaron Brooks all going for their third titles. Brooks and Sirachi can actually both follow the lead of Yanni and Spencer and become four-timers should they win for the next two years. And Sirachi can actually become a five-timer based on eligibility rules. Yes, I know. Actually, in a video a couple weeks ago, I said that Brooks could become a five-timer, but he cannot he can become a four-timer, though. And Penn State fans, you should probably know that your school has crowned more three-time national champions than any other school in the past decade. Well, actually, they've crowned more NCAA champions than any other school in the past decade with 31 total titles. And so other than the guys we know about, what about some newcomers? Well, there is Patty Gallagher, who will be making Ohio State's lineup that much tougher. He's a top freshman, the number one recruit from his class. On top of that, another top recruit from this past year was Casey Swiderski of Iowa State, who'll be joining their lineup at 141. I believe both these guys can make a real impact this year. But before I get to that bonus, I promise you, let me hit you with some quick facts about this season. There are 11 national champions returning to the field this year, but of course, not all of them can win. And taking a step back from national champions, there are 82 NCAA placers in the entire field this year. And all right, one more stat for you. It's been 1,768 days and counting since Yanni Diakamahalis' last collegiate loss. He has only one loss in his entire career, and he could go down as a four-timer with only one loss. So I actually picked up that stat about Yanni D in this resource here. That is my ultimate guide to the college wrestling season. As a matter of fact, all these stats that I talked about are in this guide and more. Top 25 team rankings, freshmen to watch out for, dark horses that you should know about, answering your frequently asked questions questions and so much more i literally doubled the stats in the guide from last year to this year 90 plus pages available to you in one convenient location so you don't have to go searching all over the internet to find these stats watching a bunch of videos no it's just for you in one convenient place if you want to find out how you can get your hands on your own ultimate guide to the college wrestling season you can check out the first link down in the description below to check that out